Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Zumaka. Zumaka is for two to five players, ages nine and up, for 25 minutes of play. In the game Zumaka, you're going to be trying to corral a bunch of animals into your zoo. Your opponents are going to be doing the same. But what's interesting about this game is not only are you going to be putting sets of animals together in front of you, you also have a bank, as well as a setting card, as well as actions and events you can take, and you're going to try and stop your players, for, uh, other players, from getting sets of animals. You're going to win the game if you can get three or four Four sets of animals depending on the number of players in the game and of course making sure other players are not able to stop you from doing that because nothing gets locked when you get sets all right let me go ahead and show what it looks like for zumaka the card game So here we have the contents for Zumaka the card game, and as you can see, you're going to be getting a box back in front, and you're also going to get your rules and a ton of cards. And of course, they're going to have different things on the back of them. You got the different animals, the different events, and whatnot. And I think there is about a hundred and something cards in here. There's a good chunk of, uh, of cards, and every player is going to get a hand of six cards, and the game will begin. But before that, let's go ahead and talk about what you can do on your turn. So before we get to the walkthrough of the game, let's talk about what type of cards and then the type of actions you can take. Now, first of all, the type of actions. You can simply play an animal from your hand. You can play an animal or any other type of card for its cost and put it into your bank as currency. You can also play an action card or a setting card, and you can additionally play a card that is going to attach itself to a specific exhibit that will do something for you whenever it's on there. Uh, at the end of your turn, you're gonna draw two cards, and if you don't have uh, a hand of cards, you're gonna have to draw up to six cards. Here are the different types of cards. You got the water buffalo, or other animals like it. It'll have the symbology of the type of animal and how many you need for it to count in the exhibit, the name of the animal, and the cost if you choose to put it in your bank face down instead. You also have wild cards like this cuttlefish here. It could be anything, but it has to be attached to something to come into play. If that card goes away, so does the cuttlefish, it's a good wild card, but it can be uh, destroyed pretty easily. If you've got cards like this, which is capture, take an animal from an opponent's zoo and place it into yours. You can simply play that for an action. You've got the card roar. When you play an animal, imitate it. If you forget, discard it. This is a setting card which means that it's in play forever until somebody else plays a new setting in which case it gets replaced and a new card gets added. You got the fortune teller's hut which gets added to a specific type of animal bin and this one says view an opponent's hand each time you charge a fee for the section. You can charge fees for animal sections and it's going to make your opponent discard cards from his bank and if he can't he has to discard from his animal pins instead which is nasty. That's why it's good to have a bank. You're also going to have cards like this which are reaction cards, direct capture. Steal an animal as it is moved from one place to another. You can move animals from one place to another provided that they share similar symbol types. And then of course you have entrances, and it'll tell you the different types of animals you can use this on. It says force a fee on all opponents for one of your sections with one of these types, such as like the monkeys or the wild animals or the stars, whatever those specifically are. And that is the basic aspects of the game. Let's go ahead and get into it in a couple rounds and show you how you can play your turn. In three actions, everybody's going to run on the board until somebody can get three or four sets, depending on the number of players. Let's go play some Zumaka. So here we are back to do Zumaka, and as you can see, I have set out the hands for each player. You start with six cards. We don't need the box or the rule book anymore. And we got the deck set aside so players can draw from it at the end of their turn. We'll go ahead and start with this player over here and let them play their cards. He's got a baboon. He's got one of these direct capture, steal an animal from a zoo as it's being moved or placed. He's got a butterfly. He's got a devil, Tasmanian devil. And then he's got two setting cards. The first thing he's going to do is simply play a setting card. He'll play this one. It says spend an action to choose a player, then take a card from that player's bank. So whenever this is out, anybody can choose to use this ability for an action. That's one action to play that card. Of course, if you want to play a new card like Carnival that is another setting, he had to place it on top of that one and get rid of the last one. He doesn't want to do that because he just played that card though. He's got these two, which is great. So that's going to be one and that's going to be two. And as you can see, they have the butterfly symbols there and you need two butterflies of, uh, in, to complete a set. And that's going to complete one of the four sets needed because we're playing with three players. If we were playing with five players, we would need to have... Um, Sorry, yeah, yeah. If, if you're playing with four players, you need a, four or less players, you play with four sets. If you're playing with five players, you play with three. Uh, so he needs, he gets one of his four sets he completed. Now that's going to be the end of his turn. He's played all three of his cards. All three actions have been taken. He's going to go ahead and get to draw up to two more cards in his hand, and then he is done. The next player is going to get to go. Let's go ahead and check out their hand. He has got his water buffalo. He's got a bear. He's got a cuttlefish. Nice. He's got a new setting card. He's got a capture, and he's got this fortune teller's hunt. He'll go ahead and play Roar, which is going to cover up payday. That means whenever you play an animal, you have to imitate it. If you forget, you discard the animal. So the next thing he will do is he'll go and play the bear, and he'll have to make a bear noise, whatever a bear sounds like, blah, 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 blah. And then he'll play a cuttlefish, cuttlefish. 
<laughs> you have to imitate. I did it poorly. Nevertheless, and then as and then after he plays these guys on there, remember, Cuttlefish is a wild, so it can attach to this guy here, and it can be moved around. However, if it's ever not attached to something, for some reason this guy gets removed, so does the Cuttlefish. We go into the discard pile here. And this player is going to end their turn because they played their three actions. He'll draw up to two more cards, and he'll put his fan he's done with his hand, and the next player is going to get to go. Let's see what this guy's got. He's got a no way card uh, that says prevent the effect or, of a direct entrance or response. And then he's got these guys here. Now he knows that he needs cards in his bank because players are gonna, eventually going to produce fees and it's going to cost him money in order to pay these fees off. This one here is a great card. Steal an animal from a zoo as it is being moved or placed, but he wants to place it as an action in his bank because that's going to give him six currency to pay off the people that are trying to collect from him. He will then also go ahead and play delivery. That'll let him draw three additional cards. That's pretty good, right? And then of course he's going to go ahead and play maybe an animal. Yeah, I think that's what he'll do. He'll play an animal. The Pygmy Marmoset. Now remember this uh, this event is still in effect. Uh, the setting is still in effect, so he has to actually try and act out the Pygmy. And whatever the Pygmy sounds like, I don't know what these animals sound like. Maybe you have to look it up online. And then of course at the end he's going to get to draw two cards. And I believe you're going to have discard cards down to six cards in your hand. I'm not too sure though, but I would guess that you have to actually discard cards down so they have their hand size. And of course the next player is going to get to go. He's simply going to start with his hand. He doesn't get to draw until the end. And he gets to uh, start placing these cards. He's got a delivery card here that'll let him draw three additional cards here. That's nice. And then he's got the uh, caribou and he's got a giraffe. That's two out of the three he needs. He's almost done collecting his sets. Awesome. He'll draw two more cards here. And then the next player is going to get to go. And it's going to continue like that. Now, remember, don't forget that you have these cards here that have the exclamation marks, preventing an effect that a direct entrance or response card for one of the players and stealing an animal if it's being moved. Now, this card's only useful when animals are being moved from one place to another. And of course, they have to be able to be moved. So you can't simply move this to over here because the symbols do not match. This one requires three of each different, uh, three of these types of, of creatures. So he needs one more, but this one is a complete set. However, this guy's going to go ahead and play his water buffalo. Blah, however that sounds like. And then, uh, let's see, take an animal from an opponent's zoo and place it in your zoo. That'll be another one. He'll go ahead and take, uh, I'll take this butterfly. You're moving this player's set. And uh, I think he wants to... I don't know. Let's see. Fortune teller side. He'll add this card and he'll put it here. It says view an opponent's hand each time you charge a fee for this section. So there's cards in the game in which you're going to be able to play on this and you can charge a fee based on the, co the cost and then they have to pay you from their bank. Now this guy doesn't have a bank so he has to actually pay from his animals over here. Not this here. This is the settings. But from his animals over here and if he, and if he, and if he pays he has to give them directly. Otherwise if it's from the bank he's simply going to take that bank card and give it to the other player into their bank. Remember having a bank can be useful because it prevents you from losing animals that are specifically in your settings. Uh, of course, then he's going to draw his next two cards and continue the game. The game will continue until somebody reaches three or four sets, depending on the number of players. And as soon as they hit that setting, uh, the three sets, they're going to win the game of Zumaka. All right, so a little caveat now. Remember, when you have to charge a fee for somebody, there's tons of cards in this game. And when you charge a fee for somebody, let's see if I can find one really quick. Here's an entrance one. Force a fee on all opponents for one of your sections with one of these types. Maybe you had a bunch of monkeys, charged him five. He only had four in his bank. No change. He has to actually pay you at least five, and it might have to be from his zoo instead. So you always want to have enough money in the bank in order to facilitate that. There's a ton of animals in the game, as you can see. There's bird wing over here. You've got a cobra. You've got a pig. You've got a falcon. Uh, what else? You got a chameleon, so on and so forth. And you have to actually act out the animals with this roar card. So you better get your yeah, you better get your phone handy to understand what the animals sound like. You're gonna get stuff like ice cream stands. Discard a card uh, each time a fee is charged for the section. Stray animals. If your zoo is empty, draw five cards. All animal cards go to your zoo. Non-animal cards are discarded. Uh, there's just tons. Also, remember, if you have no cards in your hand at the end of the turn, you're gonna draw up to six cards again. So getting rid of the cards in your hand is a good thing because you're gonna be able to draw more throughout the game. But that is the basic aspect of the game. So what do I think of Zumaka? Well, first of all, it's a set collection game. It's a take that game, and it requires a little additional uh, thinking involved when putting cards in for fees. You want to put a lot of points into the fee area, so that way you can pay off your opponents when they try and mess with you. However, the cards that you want to put in are also very, very good. This capture card can win you the game by giving you that last card you need as it's being moved and putting it into your uh, zoo. So it's kind of a debate as to what you want to do. Putting out your animals, trying to mess with your opponents, as well as collecting enough money so that you can save away from the fees in the game. I like it. That gives it a lot of theme. You feel like you're creating your little habitats and you also feel like you're competing with the other zoos or, or zoo keepers as they are trying to mess with your habitats to get their, your animals, to make you give them your animals and 
pay fees and all that kind of stuff and fines, you kind of do feel like you're the park warden of sorts and you're in control of everything. The uh, artwork is all basically symbolization, which is really cool. I like that aspect for the game. They could have done realistic animal type artwork, but I think this is actually a better version of that. It keeps you more in line with actually thinking about how the game is being flowed and functioned. Uh, my my Cameron, who was playing with me at the time, he was okay with the game. He didn't like to take that aspect. It can be kind of mean, and sometimes you can get cards that are way, way more powerful than, other, than others, and that can directly affect certain players. The more players in the game, definitely the better, the longer it's going to be as well, and the more things that can happen to you when it's not your turn, so you have to make the best possible decisions. I think this game works really well with three players. I think that's probably where I hit the sweet spot at, but I played it at four and five, and it was also very enjoyable. Two players is not as much. It's more of a go take go back and forth take that i think you're gonna want to play this a little more players the game overall is a solid game i definitely suggest checking out the game zumaka if it sounds like it's something that you would want to play all right guys thanks for watching another card game review if you're interested go check out the rest of our videos here on youtube like subscribe and comment it helps subscribe and as well as commenting on what your favorite animal is in the description below please let us know what your favorite animal is and how it sounds like what's the weirdest animal sound you could you could think about I don't know. A pygmy was kind of weird. Or a cuttlefish? How would you make a cuttlefish? I don't know. All right, as well as going out and checking out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We have tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And if you're interested in winning the game, Space Space is up there for a couple more days now. Try and get it from AEG, an excellent little game. And checking out our friends at everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to putting you in a zoo later.